Hi, my name is Makasi, and today a bit of a serious video. Well, not really, but you know. So we're here to talk about the Raf Simon Fall Winter 2017. The original in the 2017 runway says, I love New York. This version that I have says, I love Raf Simon because Raf is a self indulgent asshole. <laughs> This sweater was like a grail of mine at one point. It still is, but why don't I wear it anymore? Psst. He's gonna ask this two more times. So I got this sweater around October 2019. Note the time I got it and when the runway came out, it's gonna be important later. I wore them practically every day. I would just wear them around the house without going anywhere. That's how much I love this piece. But that was 2019. So 2020, I still wore it a lot. And then 2021, a bit less and less. And then finally, 2022, I wore them exactly once for this video I shot. So if it wasn't for that video, I probably wouldn't wear it. I don't know why. So that's what we're going to try to find out with this video. You know, it's only been two years. I haven't gotten a better sweater in the same shape. So why don't I wear it anymore? There was a time in my life where this was the best thing that I got in my closet. I loved them so much that I would just randomly take photos of it because it's such a lovely, lovely piece. So you might be thinking, Maybe, maybe I like it less because there are more colorways and more people wear them. Maybe I'm a hippie, maybe I have that mindset. Actually, no. I love when more people wear the pieces that I have. I would love to walk around Boston, New York, Toronto, Munich, and just see another person wearing this sweater. And we could strike up a conversation and possibly follow one another on Instagram and become friends and then become lover. And then I break up with my girlfriend. I tell her I'm gay because I saw this guy with the same Raph Simmons sweater as me and he's my soulmate. I genuinely enjoy seeing artists, movies, and like brands that I love succeed. I want them to get the exposure that I believe they deserve. So I would never gatekeep them. I would love to see this sweater on more people. It's just sad because everyone just have poorer taste than me. So I rarely see another man with the same pieces that I have in the street or in the sheet. So a grail of mine at one point and I don't wear it anymore. Why is that? All right, so I have come up with three theories. So the first one, I've got more pieces. The second one, the mystery and the lust from afar are gone. And third, I overloved it. So let's go through it one by one. All right, so the first one, I've gotten more pieces. So I'm a bit conflicted with this first theory because it doesn't hold true to my other pieces. So for example, I have this pair of pants and I've owned this for like five to seven years now and I've gotten a lot more pants since then but my love and adoration for these pants are still as high as the first day I got it. Or another example, my Peter Doge sweater. My affection for that sweater is still here today. I love how unique the shape is. I love how unique the Raph Simmons sweater is. So I think we can safely eliminate this theory. Okay, so the second theory, I'll explain that. But first, there's a quote I love and it comes from the most absurd sources ever. So it goes, It's the magic from the mystery. And what you know, mystery's over. So for months, I look at this piece. For months, I see fashion influencers wearing these to Paris Fashion Week. For months, I just see them on everybody that I follow on Instagram because this piece was so hot when it first came out. I was lusting for this piece for so long. And at that time, I couldn't justify the $895 price tag. While I was waiting for it, my lust and my love for this sweater continued to grow. Like at one point, I was struggling so hard. I was ready to pull the trigger on the $895 price tag. $895 for any sweater is absurd. The mystery of what this will feel like on my body, the mystery of how this will fit me, the mystery of how I will wear it, the allure and my lack of access to this piece was, cre was creating like a rather large one-sided love. So it took me two, three years of genuinely casually checking the piece out on a lot of websites, like twice a week, just to see, okay, has it gone into the sale yet? Has it gone into the sale yet? 
has it gone into the fucking sale yet? This was slowly becoming a grail of mine during that time. By the way, this is part of my definition of what a grail is. It's like something you've been lusting over for a long, long time. I also have like a sub theory. So a lot of us follow like beautiful, beautiful female influencer, right? So I think if we get to see them naked, we would lose a bit of our interest in them because we would have seen more than an average person would have. So I used to follow this girl. Her name was um, Abigail Ratchford. And then I saw her nudes. And I don't feel the same about her anymore. The mystery is gone. Once I got this sweater for like a couple months, the mystery was gone. I know what it feels like now. I know what it looks like on my body. I know how I would wear it. I see it every day. Part of what make a grail a grail is not owning it for me. And like while I was lusting over the pieces, I would say like, if I had that sweater, I would wear it weekly. Okay, so the third theory. So there is such a thing as over love. Let's look at food though. Okay, so my favorite food of all time is this fried chicken from a restaurant called Bon Chon. Like for you, it could be Shake Shack, it could be Chick-fil-A, it could be like a local burrito joint. There was this one time where I had Bon Chon for five days in a row. And then I didn't have Bon Chon again for six months because I got sick of it. A food that I would honestly put on my last meal if I was to be on death row and I got sick of it. Everything has to be in moderation. By the way, this is also why I believe that if you want to geek out over an item, Let's say like you want to have a kiss boot, right? You should find someone in the same boat as you, meaning they don't own it, meaning they're still lusting over it from afar like you. Because if you talk to me, I will not share the same enthusiasm because I have it on me. I know what it feels like. I have it in my possession. Okay, back to the food and back to the food analogy. So food is temporary. You know, we have it, we eat it, we shit it out, it's gone. So the mystery can come back after a while, but with clothes, once you have it, you have it, so the mystery is gone. But yeah, you know, these are just some possible theory I came up with as to why a piece that I once considered a grail of mine, and I don't wear them anymore. There's a few lessons in here, you know, it's somewhere. I'm not gonna point it out because it's so obvious. It's so in your face. Right, camera two? Isn't it in your face? It's so obvious, right? This is definitely not me trying to justify making this video. There's a lesson in here somewhere. Camera two agrees with me. So does camera one. But yeah. My name is Makassi. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in a week or two. Bye bye, camera one, camera two. Und verließ, mach den iPod an und alles, was ich höre, ist sunny.